Hello everyone, this is Joshua Smith of Apollo's Artifacts. It is February 2018. Today I'm going to be going over an article that was uh, published in Perspectives of uh, Psychological Science. I think it was uh, originally uh, from January of 2016. It is entitled The Top 10 Replicated Findings from Behavioral Genetics by Robert Plowman, John C. DeFries, Valerie S. Nopik, and Janae M. Niederheiser. Uh, Robert Plowman, of course, is from King's College, London. There are a uh, number of different reasons that I've decided to go over this. Before I get into the abstract, uh, one of the things uh, is that it's uh, really become quite an irritant to me that the left always wants to put it out there that they are the only side that is on the side of science. However, um, the uh, left progressives also uh, have uh, quite a bit of anti-science or science denialism amongst themselves uh, in ways that are actually quite similar to uh, conservatives, especially religious conservatives, though that is not necessarily always the case with either side, but this is uh, just to point out something that's been really common lately. There are also some outstanding um, interviews available with Robert Plowman. Uh, he is a person of the left. And uh, he points out in these interviews that uh, because of a number of his findings around uh, intelligence or G, uh, that he has been attacked, uh, you know, as uh, some kind of a dangerous uh, person. He said that he has not uh, actually suffered physical attacks, but he has, uh, you know, received uh, threats and uh, lots of uh, negative, outrageously negative commentary. However, the uh, the data and the science uh, continually um, comes up on on his side of the argument. So we start with the abstract here. In the context of current concerns about replication in psychological science, we describe 10 findings from behavioral genetic research that have robustly replicated. These are big findings, both in terms of effect size and potential impact on psychological science, such as linearly increasing heritability of intelligence from infancy, 20% through adulthood, 60%. Four of our top ten findings involve the environment, discoveries that could have only been found using genetically sensitive research designs. We also consider reasons specific to behavioral genetics that might explain why these findings replicate. And I uh, do not uh, plan to read the entire article, just some of the um, salient high points. It is uh, 26 pages long, and I will link that below. Introduction. A recent concern in psychological science is that many statistically significant findings, including some classic findings, do not replicate. This problem is not unique to psychological science. A landmark paper with the title, Why Most Published Research Findings Are False, was relevant to all scientific research. It was accompanied by a paper that focused on medical research, showing that, 49, that of 49 most highly cited medical papers, only 34 had been tested for replication, and of these, 14 had been convincingly shown to be wrong. Five of the six studies with non-randomized designs failed to replicate. Subsequent studies of attempts to replicate medical findings yielded similarly gloomy results. Such research led to claims that 85% of research resources are wasted. In psychological science, a systematic attempt to replicate 100 studies found that only 36% yielded significant replication. Another attempt to replicate 17 structural brain behavior findings concluded that, quote, we were unable to successfully replicate any. Although much has been written about the diagnosis, cause, and prescription for fixing these cracks in the bedrock of psychological science, there is consensus throughout science that the final arbiter is replication. In this context, the purpose of this paper is to highlight 10 findings about the genetic and environmental origins of individual differences in behavior that have consistently replicated. There is a lengthy introductory portion that talks about uh, scientific laws, heritability, and so on, but I'll move right down into their list. Um, number one, all psychological traits show significant and substantial genetic influence. Psychological domains that have traditionally focused on individual differences are those that have been studied most using genetically sensitive designs, primarily the twin method that compares resemblance in pairs of identical and fraternal twins cognitive abilities and disabilities, psychopathology, personality, substance use and abuse, and health psychology. Traits in these domains have consistently shown significant genetic influence in adequately powered studies. 
which has led this to be described as the first law of behavioral genetics. As an example, a review of the world's literature on intelligence, which included 10,000 pairs of twins, showed that identical twins are significantly more similar than fraternal twins, with twin correlations of about 0.85 and 0.60 respectively, with corroborating results from family and adoption studies implying significant genetic influence. Although most of this research was conducted in the United States and Western European countries, significant genetic influence has been found in countries such as Russia, the former East Germany, Japan, and rural and urban India. Recent studies continue to report similar results, as seen, for example, in a report of 11,000 pairs of twins from six twin studies in four countries. We are not aware of a single adequately powered study reporting non-significant heritability. For personality scores of twin studies have over the years yielded evidence for significant genetic influence for dozens of traits. Many other traits have also been reported to show significant genetic influence, such as political beliefs, religiosity, altruism, and even food preferences. A recent meta-analysis of nearly 18,000 traits from 3,000 publications, including 15 million twin pairs, uh, show this finding is not limited to psychological traits. Rather than just concluding that genetic influence is statistically significant, another consistent finding is that heritabilities are substantial, often accounting for half of the variance of psychological traits. For example, for in general intelligence, heritability estimates are typically about 50% in meta-analyses of older family twin and adoption studies, as well as newer twin studies with 95% con confidence intervals on the order of 45% to 55%. For personality, her heritabilities are usually 30 to 50%. And after a section here where they go over DNA differences and genome-wide complex trait analyses, they conclude significant and substantial genetic influence on individual differences in psychological traits is so widespread that we are unable to name an exception. The challenge now is to find any reliably measure, measured behavioral trait for which genetic influence is not significantly different from zero in more than one adequately powered study. Number two, no traits are 100% heritable. Although heritability estimates are significantly greater than zero, they are also significantly less than 100%. As noted above, heritabilities are substantial, typically 30 to 50%, but this is a long way from 100%. Again, we are unable to find any exception in which the heritability of a behavioral trait is near 100%. This is not a limitation of the methods because some traits, such as individual differences in height, yield heritabilities as high as 90%. However, it should be noted that behavioral traits are less reliably measured than physical traits, such as height and error of measurement, uh, which contributes to non-heritable variants. Uh, the ultimate conclusion that we draw from this section, though, is that the notion of uh, tabula rasa, or the blank slate interpretation of the human mind, is decidedly false. And I um, also think uh, when it comes to intelligence, or G, cognitive abilities and whatnot, because it is not some kind of an externally visible trait, this is what gives a lot of people trouble with understanding it and classifying it. Height uh, is obviously, you know, so noticeable, so undeniable. Uh, but intelligence is uh, something that people uh, have this tendency to think or want to believe is a subjective concept. However, it is not. We'll move on to part three. Heritability is caused by many genes of small effect. The two previous findings come from family-based genetic designs, primarily twin and adoption studies. Although the quantitative genetic model underlying these methods assumes that many genes affect complex traits and common disorders, these methods cannot estimate how many genes are involved in heritability or the distribution of their effect sizes. Number four. Phenotypic correlations between psychological traits show significant and substantial genetic mediation. Mediation here means that it helps to bring it about. Cognitive abilities have been studied most systematically from a multivariate genetic perspective. This research consistently shows that the phenotypic correlations among cognitive abilities are mediated significantly and substantially by genetic factors. A multivariate genetic analysis of intelligence, reading, mathematics, and language in nearly 5,000 12-year-old twins 
found that genetic factors consistently accounted for over half of the phenotypic correlations ranging from 53% to 65%, with a mean of 61% and a mean 95% confidence interval. And similar findings have also been made related to areas uh, outside of intelligence. A recent uh, review, for example, of molecular genetic studies of schizophrenia concluded, quote, there is evidence for shared genetic risk between schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, autism spectrum disorders, intellectual disability, and attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder. These results convey an important implication. The genetic structure of psychopathology does not map neatly on current diagnostic classifications. And uh, this is a reference here to the uh, DSM, which is the um, Psychology or Psychiatry Bible. I have a two-part series on that that I'll link below also if you want to find out what they're talking about there. Moreover, correlations between personality dimensions and psychopathological diagnoses are also mediated genetically, most notably between neuroticism and depression. We move on to part five. The heritability of intelligence increases throughout development. Unlike the other findings, this one is limited to a specific domain, general cognitive ability or intelligence, sometimes referred to as G. But it is one of the most surprising and counterintuitive findings from behavioral genetics, although it would be reasonable to expect that experiences accumulate in their effect as time goes by, which some developmental theories propose, the heritability of intelligence has consistently over three decades research been found to increase linearly throughout the life course in longitudinal as well as cross-sectional analyses in adoption as well as twin studies. The heritability of intelligence increases significantly from 41% in childhood around the age of 9 to 55% in adolescence around the age of 12 and to 66% in young adulthood around the age of 17. Some evidence suggests that heritability might increase to as much as 80% in later adulthood, independent of dementia. Other results suggest a decline to about 60% after the age of 80. And uh, this averages out uh, overall to a range of, say, 55% to 60%. I typically stick with the number 60% because the lows you usually see are 40%, the highs are 80, and you average the two, and that gives you that figure. Why does heritability of intelligence increase throughout development? Increasing heritability could be due to new genetic influences coming online, a process called innovation, which would seem reasonable given the changes in brain structure and function that occur during development. However, the next finding about age-to-age -age genetic stability suggests a less obvious reason for the developmental increase in heritability. And uh, there they could be uh, talking about how the adult brain, especially, for example, the male uh, brain does not uh, reach full maturity until the age of about 25. Section 6, age-to-age -age stability is mainly due to genetics. For personality, the first report of a longitudinal genetic analysis over an age span of a decade concluded that 80% of the phenotypic stability was mediated genetically. This even applies in such areas as psychopathology, such as borderline personality disorder, BPD attention problems, aggression issues, withdrawn behavior, anxiety and depression, and the general internalizing and externalizing problems. Increasing heritability despite genetic stability implies some contribution from what has been called genetic amplification. In other words, genetic nudges early in development are magnified as time goes by, increasing heritability, but the same genetic propensities continue to affect behavior throughout one's life course. Number seven, most measures of the environment show significant genetic influence. Number eight, most associations between environmental measures and psychological traits are significantly mediated genetically. Number nine, most environmental effects are not shared by children growing up in the same family. And uh, what this refers to is uh, the same events uh, within a family can be interpreted by different members of the family differently and then that affect their personality in various ways later on. Um, the next part in that says 
Academic achievement consistently shows some shared environmental influence, presumably due to the effect of schools. Although the effect is surprisingly modest in its magnitude, about 15% for English and 10% for mathematics. Given that this result is based on siblings growing up in the same family and being taught in the same school, an interesting developmental exception is that shared environmental influence is found for intelligence up until adolescence and then diminishes as adolescents begin to make their own way in the world, as shown in various meta-analyses. And what this says basically is that they all start off similarly in the same family, and then there's a breakaway point. And the tenth and final finding here is that abnormal is ultimately normal. And what they mean by this is that it happens to occur on a spectrum. Uh, every person can uh, display various aspects of what could be a disability or psychopathology to some degree or another. But when it gets to certain levels, then it actually meets uh, DSM criteria to be classified as a particular disorder. Under the final section here, controversy. The modern origins of genetic research and psychology began about 150 years ago, the work of Francis Galton, who coined the phrase nature and nurture. And that now would be nature is genes, nurture is environment, and then you have epigenetics, which is the third thing that has emerged since then, which launched uh, psychology's major conflict of the 20th century. We suggest that the controversy and conflict surrounding behavioral genetics had the positive effect of motivating bigger and better studies that met the high standard of evidence needed to convince skeptical psychological scientists of the importance of genetics in the development of individual differences in behavior. A, a single study was not enough. Rather, it was the convergence of evidence across studies using different methods that tipped the balance of opinion. The relevance for other embattled fields is the comfort of knowing that the extra effort required to address skepticism and criticism can pay off in building a stronger foundation for a field. And finally, under conclusions they have here, discovering such big and often counterintuitive findings as a cause for celebration in psychology, especially coming from behavioral genetics, which has been so controversial during the past century. These findings have begun to change the received psychological perspective about the origins of individual differences in behavior. During the past century, the pendulum of opinion has swung from nature to nurture and is now swinging back towards nature. We hope that this research has stopped the pendulum at a point between nature and nurture because the most basic message is that both genetics and environment contribute substantially to individual differences in psychological traits. It is worth noting again that four of these findings are primarily about the environment rather than about genetics, which emphasizes the value of studying environmental influences in genetically sensitive designs. And in relation to the many controversies involved in this, I will reference you back to the video presentation that I did uh, from a paper that I wrote when I was at university about uh, eugenics and population control, about uh, the way that the Nazis came up with a lot of their theories for eugenics and whatnot, and how that, of course, went on to impact later psychological and behavioral genetic studies, which uh, people are still fighting against today to get recognized for the truth that is actually within that and that it does not necessarily have to lead to some kind of uh, Nazi conclusion or population control measures or what have you. Anyway, that's all for today. Thank you.